This is natural gas that's being burned off in the Permian Basin in West Texas. The area is going through an oil boom, and many are predicting that this American shale may soon be the biggest oil field in the world. 30 years ago, no one would have predicted this. We thought it was going to be in the Middle East somewhere. It's booming. They're working my butt off. <laughs> that's what you want to know. <laughs> We came up to West Texas because recent climate reports have underscored that we need to drastically reduce our emissions, which for now includes using more natural gas, which is cleaner than coal. So why are producers in the Permian wasting about a million dollars of natural gas every day by flaring it, while also venting a gas 30 times more potent than CO2, methane? The industry calls me a radical. I really want the public to see what I see looking through this camera. And what's it like for the people who live amongst the flares? Even a clean burning flare is creating emissions that can be harmful to folks that are nearby. You can't live in this smell. Well, it's just like an airplane passing through. The oil field hit us pretty hard and yeah. it changed my life. The oil industry has just ripped our desert asunder. Imagine this as an ocean. It was a few hundred million years ago. Now it's dried up, leaving behind an oil-rich seabed. It's called the Permian Basin in West Texas and southern New Mexico. When you fly into Midland, Texas, you pass over a century's worth of vertically drilled oil fields. It's here that they got some of the fuel used to supply Allied forces during World War II. But we're going southwest of Midland to look at the rapid growth brought on by fracking. If the UN is calling for a managed decline of our fossil fuel production, America is doing the opposite, rapidly developing oil and gas projects. There's just over a thousand active rigs in the US and almost half of them are here. About two years ago is when all this mess started. Which caught some locals here in Reeves County very off guard. They're all over out here and they're gonna get thicker and thicker as time goes by. We've been told there, I don't know how many thousands of wells will be out here. But while some people are upset, a lot of people are actually benefiting from the boom. The town of Pecos has nearly doubled its population, mostly oil and gas workers chasing rapid job growth. And for locals, it brings more work. This week, I've already gone about 20 hours overtime. They're working me. <laughs> but also a chance to sell your mineral rights Come here, to a company looking to drill under your property. We leased our mineral rights to them. I don't know if that's the rig that's drilling underneath the city of Pecos. But because oil is the desired product, the Permian has quickly developed a natural gas problem according to groups like the Environmental Defense Fund. Natural gas is sold too, it's an energy source. But the market price is super low, and the industry says that there's just so much growth that there's not enough pipelines to transport it or infrastructure to capture it. So many producers waste it by burning it off, what's called flaring. A flare is supposed to burn 98% of, of the natural gas, but of course there are malfunctions. Sometimes the flares are unlit, which means you have leaking methane directly into the atmosphere. I've never seen anything like the Permian. There's no one out here to watch them or to police them. You could say that Sharon does her own policing with this $95,000 camera that can detect methane leaks, a gas that accelerates global warming. There is a path forward how we can get it out of this runaway warming that we're in because of methane, but it's not happening. And it, it means that we have to stop using fossil fuels. As we were filming, a highway trooper stopped to talk to us about safety. We're, we're going to have a record fatality year, crash year. But it turned out the very site we were looking at was just a couple hundred meters from his house. I'll walk outside and I can smell it in the morning, especially if it's colder, you know, mm -hmm. it brings it down. But I don't know the first thing about flares. I'm still. You don't want to look through this camera. Look. You can show me. You, put you, you can put your hand. Me. Put your hand through here. See, it's not lit. The tops of those tanks are leaking like really bad. These leaks, you can't see them with the naked eye, but you can smell them. 
this poison gas well to the east of us, it comes under our house and basically we sleep in it. They just are nauseating smells all the time. Jim bought this place back in 2002 to retire. There was nothing around us. The yellow pinpoints is what you see is a flare. There's one, two, three. Now four, we're being driven out because five, we just can't live six. here. You can't live in this smell. You can see probably 18 right now. And it's not just the smell, it's, it's what it's doing to me. I'm breathing it all night long. All of this is medication. Since they've started the oil field, I'm now on three different medications for breathing. There's no conclusive health data for the Permian yet, but in North Dakota's oil field, a researcher from California State has drafted a paper that correlates high flaring volumes to increased hospital visits for respiratory problems. Flaring is a waste issue. It's wasted energy and wasted emissions. The Permian Basin Petroleum Association and the Texas Oil and Gas Association said in statements to NBC News that there's a demand for American energy and flaring will be reduced as new infrastructure is developed. Industry is saying, well, flaring is bad and it's going to get worse, but once we have these pipelines built, this problem will, will be solved. One of the companies in Reeves County, Apache, told Bloomberg News that they've shut in wells when there isn't pipeline capacity and that ideally they wouldn't be flaring at all. I mean, in the in perfect world, they, you know, I don't want to be flaring either because, you know, uh, not only are you emitting, uh, you know, you know, gases, you're also burning, uh, you know, revenue. There's no doubt you need pipelines, but I don't think it'll solve all of the problem in the Permian. The EDF points to how in 2014 and 15, before there was this pipeline problem, the Permian still wasted the same amount of natural gas it would take to heat all the homes in a state like Iowa. The market is not going to solve this. There needs to be some sort of regulatory oversight. When it comes to regulation, the Obama administration introduced a rule to limit flaring and methane venting, but the Trump administration rolled it back before it ever went into effect. In the New Mexico part of the Permian, the newly elected Democratic governor announced in January 2019 that they would be developing methane regulations for oil and gas projects. In Texas, however, for all things oil and gas, you go to the Texas Railroad Commission. The Texas Railroad Commission is a misnomer. We do nothing with trains. So unlike most other states, in Texas, our energy regulators are elected, which is a big deal because Texas is the largest energy producing state in the union. So having the energy regulator here be elected connects us very directly with the voters. And so when we talk about things like the economics of energy development, or when we talk about protecting the environment, uh, we can get past the politics a little bit and deal directly with the people who we work for, which are the voters of the state. But when asked about the connection between flaring and climate change, the TRC says it's negligible. The amount of CO2 in the atmosphere due to flaring in the Permian Basin, I mean, you're talking a, a fraction of a fraction of a percentage. And I've read many peer-reviewed papers that say that the 2% of natural gas that's flared in the Permian Basin today has an entirely negligible impact on global warming. You could argue that this very reporting trip by flying here and driving a car and renting a helicopter is another fraction of a fraction of a percentage of man-made emissions. But when it comes to reducing our global emissions, individual consumer choices pale in comparison to corporate emissions. That's because 71% of all greenhouse gas emissions come from the top 100 fossil fuel producers globally. The TRC does of course have rules on flaring, but there's a process to get an exemption and so we went to go see what that looks like. The operator has to actually go before the commission for a hearing. Please be seated. I have two appearances for the record, both here representing the applicant. Let the record show that no one filed an intent to appear in protest and no one is here in protest. They have not refused a flaring permit in five years. Your Honor, today we'll put on evidence to justify the application for a flare exception. Only about 6.8 total percent of the total gas production actually gets flared. And what little flaring is done, and we're hoping to reduce it even, even further. And sure, even if we say, yep, our, the things we're doing have an impact, if it's not so large an impact that we, by making some change in the Permian Basin, would affect it, then why cause massive 
economic challenges for Texans and Americans by putting a significant increase on the price of a gallon of gas for negligible changes to the environment, negligible changes to global warming. Well, just like an airplane passing through. It stays there 24 hours. Just gotta live with it, got no choice. That's a really nice place you have there. Do you own any mineral rights? No, I don't. Oh, gosh. I, uh, I bought the house thinking I did, but it turns out I don't. So I don't make a dime off any of this. Why should we give up our retirement home? Because somebody wanted a lot of money from oil. Since filming this story, Sue and Jim have a new well directly across the street from them, and Sue is on increased medication. They are looking to move.